Good morning, everybody. Um, so my name is Brett Klavchak, and I teach 9th and 11th grade English at Pittsburgh Alderdice. Um, and I just wanted to start off by thanking Jim, uh, James, who I don't see in the, the crowd today, and the fellows in my seminar, and really everyone at Y&I &I, um, who helped give me such an incredible experience this summer, because um, never have I felt so respected, I think, as a professional. Um, as a first-time fellow, I came to New Haven in July with a, a serious case of imposter syndrome. I think I had mentioned this uh, in July when we met. Um, I just thought for whatever reason, like a place like Yale wasn't necessarily for me or wasn't a place where I could come to and really excel. Um, but after the wine I experience, I feel a sense of pride in my daily work in the classroom, um, as well as an abundance of confidence that I do in fact have some wisdom that should be shared with students, but I guess Mason will come up here in a minute and prove whether I should have that confidence or not. <laughs> um, so the unit I taught to Mason um, and his other classmates was titled, Who Watches the Watchmen? How Police Militarization Has Subverted the Constitution. And I base it off of what I learned in James Foreman Jr.'s uh, seminar titled, The Problem of Mass Incarceration. So when studying in seminar, an aspect of mass incarceration that really captured my attention was the way in which the police were trained to interact with the public. I felt that I could write my unit on the police because if students didn't have a direct experience, they would at least be familiar with the problem of police militarization through the plethora of stories that seem to dominate the news. Um, I think more specifically in Pittsburgh, we, we dealt with the Antoine Rose shooting and trial recently, which really spoke to me when I was researching um, for the unit. And I wanted to give my students a voice and the facts to put words to an experience many of them go through on a daily basis. Um, so in class, we studied the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and we considered how the systems and policies of law enforcement have contributed to a degradation of our individual liberties. We never ventured into hating the police, though. Um, rather, we worked to humanize the individuals involved in policing uh, to make the point that to affect like, a real and lasting change, we got to focus on the system rather than the individual within it. Um, but I think the best person to be able to really speak to what my unit did and how it affected students would be one of my students. So I want to introduce uh, my 11th grade student, uh, Mason Brooks. Um, hello, fellow students and um, initiative members with uh, Yale University. I want to start off by giving thanks to um, everybody here in this room because you've given me the opportunity to be, um, to be as confident as I am and I never thought I would get here. I want to thank my mother who um, has made so many mistakes in her life but I know she loves me every day and she's trying to get better. My father who's shown me what, what a man really is and how I can improve on that to help my future family and uh, myself. My siblings who have told me that it's okay to have a voice and that you can use that to not only better yourself but better the people around you so that people remember you. And also my friends, my teachers, my mentors who have never given up on me, who have told me to keep pushing through when I didn't believe in myself. And it's just, it's overwhelming. I can't, I can't thank them enough. So in Mr. Plavchak's class, the Yale curriculum has not only enlightened me on the unit's deeper premise, but it's also caused the class to bring a sense of urgency on what's happening in the world, not just happening in the classroom and staring at a textbook. And um, I feel like this was very, I felt like this connected to me in a certain way because I, I was thinking about it before, but this opportunity has, in, has enriched my, my, sense of, my sense of being and my sense of, um, especially my sense of activism. Because I feel like if we, the longer we stay silent, the, the more we stand with everything that's going against us. Um, too often my learning experience has like I said before, been clouded by standardized tests and gray expectations, and everybody's worried about if they're college ready or not, if they can get scholarships here and there, rushing through the hallways, talking with teachers and counselors, worried about the test next Thursday, about what they got on the, the PSAT, even though it's not graded. <laughs> um, but, 
But I believe this has not only shown me to work hard in school, but further my education outside. Because of Mr. Plavchak, you know, working with all of you amazing people and um, bringing this to Pittsburgh, I've been able to look, look deeper, you know, read some things like James Baldwin and um, W.E.B. Du Bois and Martin Luther King, J John F. Kennedy, all of those people. And I've, it's, it's just educating. It's, it's educated me as a person, not just as a student. Um, the curriculum, I believe, is so effective because it touches on real world objects. Um, as you can see, the, uh, the news is, has been clouded with, media, with, uh, with terrible news and that's what I wake up to every day, every night. You see it when you get home, you see it in the morning when you're making your coffee. It's, it's demeaning, it's demoralizing, it's dehumanization. And they, they, want us to, um, they want us to think badly so that we can't be the change we want to see. Mahatma Gandhi. He knew it before television even existed. <laughs> but yeah, I think he would be proud of me. He wouldn't know me anyways. <laughs> and, um, most, but most importantly, the impact of this curriculum has just been so helpful, especially because I connect to it on a personal level. Um, I, I was scared of public speaking before, but luckily I had a family member, a cousin I was very close with. His name was Jordan E. Lewis, and he was, he was gunned down in, in early June. And um, he was one of the first people that believed in me to do public speaking. And he was, he was shot by another black man, and um, I'm, I'm not upset at him, I'm not, because I know that he was not born into hatred, and it's, he took, they, um, I apologize, pardon me. Thank you. Yeah, but I wanted to say that it's, the, the community is being dehumanized and we're being fed lies and we're always stuck at the bottom and we have to rise up and I want to move people and inspire people to do things like I'm doing even when, even when, <laughs> even when it's tough and you can't, you seem like you can't do it and everybody's telling you you can't. You have to believe in yourself and be, be the outlier because that's who we're all meant to be. We're all meant to stand out. And I'm literally standing out right now <laughs> in front of you all because it not only represents me, not only represent, represents Pittsburgh, but re it represents who I am. It represents my race, my family. I'm representing everyone who's ever put me down or lifted me up because they have helped me either way. Thank you for your time.